Hey gang, we are in Kiwani, Illinois today. We're at a cemetery called Mount Olivet. I want to give a little shout out to one of our viewers, subscribers, Ryan Schmidt, who suggested this story. Did not know about this story. I knew about the overall background of it, but you're going to find this very inspiring, very, very interesting. Anyway, you know, going back when we were kids, many of us, I mean, we, I think almost all of us had our dreams of what we wanted to be when we grew up. Little girls, right? Many of you thought, well, I want to be a nurse or I want to be a movie star or maybe today I want to be the leader of a country. I want to be president. And us little boys, I know I wanted to be a, a choo-choo train engineer, actually that big diesel engine. Or many boys wanted to be, of course, firemen, policemen. Well, we're going to talk about a little boy today who wanted to be a policeman. Now, some of these children, they were never able to realize their dream. They never had a chance. They were terminally ill. And many of them, of course, passed and never got to, to make their dreams. So there was an organization that was formed many, many years ago. I'm sure many of you have heard of it called Make-A-Wish. It's a foundation that is designed to try to fulfill dreams for the little kids that, that didn't make it or can't make it. And they do a great job. And you, although you can't, they can't fulfill the dream completely, they do the next best thing. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about this little boy. He was one of those children. But even within that, he, he was different. And well, let's take a walk. We'll go to his grave. His name, his name was Christopher James Gracious. His mom and him lived in Scottsdale, Arizona. We're having a great life. Everything was going fantastic. And of course, Chris dreamed of being a policeman. Someday he was gonna become a police officer. He really looked up to cops. Now they had a family friend there. His name was Tommy Austin. And he was a US customs agent. And he developed a special friendship with Chris. It all started when Tommy came over for the first time. He walked in the front door and all of a sudden he heard this voice, hey, you, freeze, stick him up. It was little Chris. <laughs> so Tommy put his hands up and, okay, I surrender. I need to search you for contraband. So he, little Chris patted him up and down to make sure that there wasn't any weapons or any stolen goods that Tommy had. And after he was satisfied, he reached out his little hand and he said, Hey, hi there. My name's Chris. Well, from then on, there was a special friendship developed. And of course, in the end, it didn't take long for little Chris to look up to Tommy. Tommy really inspired him. They would play cops and robbers, if you will. Of course, Tommy would play the bad guy and Chris would play the policeman who always wanted to catch the bad guys. And Chris would chase him in his battery-powered three-wheeled motorcycle. And of course, Chris would always make that arrest. He would catch him every single time. Well, sadly, in February of 1979, some really bad news came in. Chris was diagnosed with leukemia. It's devastating. And of course, his mom and Tommy was devastated, as everyone was. And Tommy got together with his fellow officers, public safety folks, and he said, we've got to do something. We've got to do something special for Chris. He's not going to make it. It doesn't look good. And they said, they gathered around, and they said, we're in. Whatever you want to do, we will do it. 
So, well, that day, that time finally came when it was going to be imminent. There was nothing more that they could do for Chris back then. And the days were numbered. So Tommy got back with the guys and he said, well, what are we going to do? And they said, well, one of the guys who was a helicopter pilot said, I'll give him a ride. I'll give him a ride in the helicopter. He said, that's a great idea. The next day when they were going to do the ride, the news channel showed up along with everybody else. It was a big crowd. So they took him up in the ride. He rode the helicopter and they landed at the Department of Public Safety in the parking lot there. Went inside, he got a tour of the place and he was high-fiving everybody. It was fantastic. He had the biggest smile, little Chris. They had a little uniform for him. Lieutenant Colonel Dick Schaefer pinned a badge on his chest and then swore him in. Well, it was a great day, but very sadly on May 2nd, Chris told his mom, he said, Mommy, I don't feel so good. I don't feel so good. And the next day he passed away. This is Chris's grave right here. Christopher James Gracious. August 8th, 1972, May 3rd, 1980. And it says right here, Arizona Trooper. And here you can see a, a little card that talks about a little Chris. And let me tell you about him. Let me tell you this boy's amazing legacy that he has. Before I do that though, I did bring a little something for him. A little car. And if you pop the doors open, the sirens go off. <laughs> or at least the lights go off, so we will, we will leave that for him. They had the funeral out here, of course, and there were a lot of people. And not only were there a lot of people, but there were a lot of policemen here because they gave Chris a full policeman's funeral. The word went out, man. It went out to everybody, far and wide. Realizing Chris's joy at receiving his wish, his mother Linda worked with others to start a wish-granting organization. And by January of 1981, the gracious Make-A-Wish Memorial, it was founded. And the non-profit memorial later became the Make-A-Wish Foundation. That's right, folks. This is the reason Chris is the inspiration for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And by the way, if this story touches you, which it does me very deeply, there is an episode on it with his mom and those people, and I will put the link in the description box below. Make-A-Wish Foundation, who, who would have ever thought in Kiwani, Illinois, we would find this amazing family, this amazing little boy. Rest in peace, buddy, our Arizona Trooper.